Okay, so we were looking at um, how I could create the space. We start to work the knee slice. Here are no jujitsu, he's staying tight. So I couldn't win the underhook, so I'm just gonna go for it anyway. But now I don't have the control. So as I knee slice in, card comes to taste me. End up in the front headlock position. So we addressed last time the basic concepts from here. We also showed you how to hit a dorsh. We're gonna now look at the anaconda. So again, from there, I'm gonna stay connected. I want my left hand controlling his chin. My right's gonna come under, underneath his armpit. And now we have that double chin strap position. Okay, so obviously the dars was coming under, so that's gonna feed through this side. Anaconda comes the other way. Yeah, so anytime you're entering with the dars, you're always entering from the armpit. Anytime you're going for the anaconda, you're entering from the head, but coming under. The There's a million ways of getting into it. Um, this is just a gator roll, you're just gonna turn him. So um, a couple of ways of doing this. Let's just say from that um, double chin strap position, I'm staying tight. I'm gonna feed. I'm gonna feed my left hand through and make that grip. Notice the way Carl has a base on his left elbow. So one way of doing this is using my connection to smear Carl's left elbow under his body. Now the worst thing you can do is keep your ear in their shoulder because when you roll them, they're gonna land on your head. And if they're bigger than you, it's gonna hurt. So the detail is, I bring my head through that space. So my left foot's coming up, and I'm bringing my head through. Notice the way I'm shelving this. And now you just roll over to the inner position. Okay. From here, all I'm gonna do is extend both my arms. It's all about connection. I can feel now the crook of my arm around Carl's jugular. I'm just extending, binding my bicep, and the other hand is gonna take the slack out. Notice the way Carl's head's kind of below, so I'm just going to use my elbow to move it up more towards my belly. And now, from there, I'm just going to start walking towards his And Sometimes what can happen is, from here, Carl can raise that elbow up, very much like a head and arm. See the way now that the space between um, his shoulder here? The worst thing you can do is release your grip on the head, and now he's just turning into me and taking a whole lot of different problems from our position. So anytime we close the loop, we want to keep it closed, just from the front head like that. So anytime I make that connection, and we're here. Right. I'm coming underneath and I've got my double chin strap, and then I go hand to hand and I'm smearing this down, foot comes up. Anytime I make that closed loop, it never opens again. Head comes underneath, I'm going to roll him over. Carl immediately sometimes defends by bringing that elbow up, if that makes sense. So now I just can't make the connection. Okay, I'm not going to use my hands, I'm going to use my legs. I'm just going to hip out and bring my hamstring over the top and then I wipe it down. And now from that position, it's just about the connection. If you get a, uh, the anaconda on sweet, you don't even need to walk towards his legs. It's just about finding that connection. <coughs> like every choke you get to, if you're connected, it's good. Um, Bradley Hill's spin on this is he tripods up and walks the other way. So, again, from our position, we're in a front headlock position. I have that double chin strap. If I choose and I'm going for the anaconda, I will let go of the chin and get hand to hand. So, rather than maybe you're struggling, um, Carl's posted and I just can't get that elbow on the inside. Okay. All I'm going to do is try pull it up, and now if he stay posted though, and now if he's still posted and I can't fill that space, I'm going to walk in the opposite direction of what I'm doing, and watch what happens to the face. Right again. Okay. So once I have that connection, if he has the if he has in the elbow up, I'm straight into finishing the anaconda. If I have a connection, and I'm a little bit loose. Concentrate on using your elbow to move his head up into your belly, and then you can walk towards his legs to get it as well. So, putting that in the pillow, in your back. So I get him flat on his back, I create the space, I move into headquarters. I'm looking to work hip and lever. 
Charl is hiding so he don't get the underhook. I'm just going to knee slice and get up into the front headlock position. Once we're here, I have the double chin stop um, for control. If I choose to, and I'm going for the anaconda, just check this out. I release hand to hand, and now it's this. Now the battle will be pushing this elbow to the inside. So we have two methods. We can just post the foot on the mat, smear it underneath, bring her head through the space, rolling over. And again, from there, it's just about connection. We just extend both my arms. And then, if he flares that elbow, I don't let go. Right? Can you, if, it's, if it's sort of in the wrong place, and I feel I can't get to it, I can use my elbow to push it into a position where my leg can smear it down. That makes sense? Then, and then again. Or, if you're up against the bigger, stronger guy. We're here. And he's really posted out on that. I'm going to tripod up. He's posted. And then, if I still can't get his elbow on the inside, I'm going to walk in the opposite direction. Okay. Let's try that, guys, yeah? <laughs> 